This is MJ. I love, well, what do I love? Comics or Star Wars right now? I love Star Wars comics sometimes when they're good. Anyway, uh, this is my review of The Rise of Kylo Ren, issue four. It is the concluding, the uh, the ultimate, yeah, it is, technically it's the ultimate uh, issue in that mini series written by Charles Soule. Uh, we have art by Will Sliney. Sliney, once again, you are doing a heck of a job. Uh, actually, um, the, the coloring is done by Guru FX, uh, and uh, Travis Lanham's doing the, uh, the lettering here. So, I do have a complaint about the coloring, or the, uh, it's probably the coloring, probably the digital coloring. And the issue that I have is, if you turn to the page where, what's this guy's name? Is this guy Kai? I don't know what his name is. The bald guy. Anyway, he's fighting uh, Ben, and his uh, Ben points his lightsaber at him. He angles it at him, and the like aura around their lightsabers are like blending together. The foreshortening on Ben's lightsaber is a little weird. So even though you know Will Sliney's is doing good, good work here uh, with the art, it still looks a little funny. Um, like the shape of the beam. And stuff, I don't know. Just a, I'm very displeased with it. It almost looks like a. Maybe it was rushed or something, that aspect of it. <laughs> because it just, uh, it looks unfinished, unpolished, and I'm uh, dissatisfied with that. It really stuck out to me, especially because the rest of the artwork is so good. So, that was, uh, that was a big disappointment for me. Anyway, on to the uh, rest of the comic. Uh, I liked it. Uh, it was good. It was, you know, the same quality writing that we've been getting from Charles Soule. There wasn't really much in the way of insights into the character, uh, except for the fact that I kind of have a sense now that the reason Ben Skywalker turned to the dark side is because he feels like his destiny has been forced upon him by other people, that he is expected to live up to people's expectations, and that is something he doesn't want to have to do. He kind of refuses to live up to other people's expectations. And because of that, he is almost choosing to do the other thing. He's kind of like George Costanza, where he chooses to do the opposite of his impulses. It almost seems like Ben Sky or Ben Solo is so upset that people are putting expectations on him that he's just doing the opposite of what he thinks they want him to do or the opposite of what he himself uh, feels like doing. And uh, I, I kind of don't like that. I, I think that's a very weak characterization for him. And uh, <laughs> here we go again, uh, you know, kind of my mantra. I am once again disappointed in the sequel trilogy of the Star Wars franchise. And uh, yeah. Um, that's all I'll say about that. Uh, the comic itself was enjoyable. Uh, certain things happened in it. You know, uh, Ben becomes master of the Knights of Ren. Uh, and the way he does that in this issue is... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, spoil it because you could probably expect it. He kills the current leader, who is Ren. Uh, the gray-haired young man... Uh, who's running around shirtless with that helmet. Um, he kills him. I was really pleased when he killed the guy because I really dislike the guy. I don't dislike him because he's evil. Uh, you know, I, I'm pettier than that. I actually disliked Ren because he was just irritating to me. I didn't like his dialogue. I didn't like the way he was written. Um, he... I, I don't know. I don't even know what to say about this guy. But uh, I enjoyed the... I, well, I kind of enjoyed the turn of Ben against the Knights of Ren. Uh, I thought it was good and it made sense, and he only really turned against the one, um, you know, which was Ren himself, and then he, he killed him. Uh, probably the best page was when he's fighting, again, I'm thinking the guy's name is Kai, the bald guy, I can't remember his name. What a, what a memorable character, right? Anyway, um, when he's fighting with him, they're on a bridge, which is, you know, Ben's thing now. He fights people on bridges and, and it's very important. Or I guess that's a Star Wars thing, right? And uh, it was there was a very interesting confrontation between them, and it ends rather abruptly with uh, Baldy telling him to just be who you are, be who you're meant to be, and then 
we hear those words echoed, and since this is after uh, the rise of Skywalker has come out, and we know all about Palpatine, and the clone, and the puppetry of Snoke and whatnot, um, the comic shows us a couple glimpses of Palpatine speaking through the Snoke puppet to Ben, and uh, yeah, he's telling him too to be who you're supposed to be, be who I want you to be, and I don't know, like the the writing of that doesn't really make sense to me because I mean I guess ultimately he because he betrays Baldy he, he kills him I'm just gonna say he kills him uh, but he's very, very conflicted about it um, but he kills him because Baldy is trying to tell him to be the nephew of Luke Skywalker the son of uh, General Organa or you know General Leia and Han Solo the hero of the of the rebellion of the Republic whatever uh Baldi's telling him to live up to these expectations. Um, Ren is kind of uh, giving him a hard time, saying like, "Hey, you gotta, you know, kill people. You got, we need you to do a good death and stuff like that." And he's like, "Well, here's your good death. I'll just kill you." And then uh, Vo or Voe or whatever her name's supposed to be, um, she's defenseless, and he ends up murdering her too uh, because she wants to be great. And he's like, "Look, there's no one left to teach you. You can't be great." Um, like, and you won't be better than me. Eh, he doesn't actually say that, but I kind of got the sense of that in the dialogue. Like, look, lady, you're no good. You suck. I'm going to kill you now because, you know, there's no point uh, in your living. And actually, he asked her, he asked her, ah, I have it put away, so I can't really grab it right now. He asks her something like, like, why do you even want to live? And that seemed less to me like an insult or a dig and more like a genuine question. Like, why do you want to live? What is the point of your life? Why, like, what are you living for? And I think Ben is conflicted because he's searching for something to live for, something to make his life worthwhile. And he just doesn't know what that is or what that could be. And he can't figure that out because he's under the pressure of all these people hanging their expectations upon him, which I guess that's not an enjoyable experience. The only thing I can think is that Palpatine through Snoke you know, clouding his mind and inserting all these different things is what's, you know, enabling him to become so corruptible because, you know, the guy could just like, uh, he could just become like a spice addict and disconnect from the force. And like that, that path makes more sense to me. The Cade Skywalker path makes a lot more sense than the Ben Solo path, uh, for a character. Um, gosh. Yeah. Anyway. So it was a little disappointing. Uh, there was one really great line in this comic, though, and it was said by the bald guy. I feel really badly for not knowing his name, and I just finished listening to... Um, so this is Charles Soule, who's going to be on Project Luminous, or a big part of Project Luminous, and he is uh, also working on Project Luminous with... Um, oh, man. The guy who wrote Duke I, Dooku Jedi Lost. Oh, Kavan Scott. Anyway... Um, Kavan Scott, you know, I forgot where I was going with that whole thing. You know, it doesn't matter. There was one really good, oh yeah, yeah, Kavan Scott wrote Dooku Jedi Lost, which had a character whose name was Kai uh, in it. So that's why I'm getting confused. But let me just double check and see what exactly this guy's name is. So yeah, Vo's the lady. Um, oh, no, no, no. I, I'm not looking for the, the name. I'm looking for the really fantastic line that the bald guy says. And if he, if his name happened to pop up here, that would be cool, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But anyway, um, it was really, really interesting, uh, that you get to see Ben talking about, oh, every path goes in two directions. Ben is basically complaining and saying that he has no path. He has no path that he can choose because again, all these expectations are being hung on him. So it seems to me like every path presented to him or every person presenting to him, this is the path you should go or who he senses is trying to corral him. He just goes the opposite way. Now, why did he stick with Snoke for like for years and years and years and not rebel against Snoke before he decided to? Maybe it was because Snoke was just far too powerful when he was not, when he was done playing Mr. Nice Guy and uh, had fully manipulated him and had gotten him to fall to the dark side or whatever. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Anyway, that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, that was a great line that, you know, 
there's always a choice on the path. The path that you're on always goes two ways, basically. Like you can always just turn around and start walking the other direction. I love that concept. And like, I mean, hats off to Soul because like that really is uh, the through line through Ben's life, through Kylo Ren's life, that he gets to, uh, he, he keeps making the wrong choice. And all he has to do is stop and turn around and go the other way. And he can not necessarily redeem himself, but at least fix what he's doing. And ultimately, that's what he does in The Rise of Skywalker. So I really do enjoy how it goes into that story. But I'm still not satisfied with the answers we got here, uh, other than he's like an uber contrarian. Uh, like, that's the biggest thing I walked away with. Ben Solo is an uber contrarian. And instead of just becoming a slacker and cutting out from all the things that people were looking to him for, uh, for some reason, he just decided to go the other way and live his life ironically, I guess. So that's a little disappointing. Anyway, uh, that's again, well, I'm saying this again. That's all I have to say for the review reviews over. Um, but, uh, you know, speaking of other things that I'm doing or whatever, while I have your attention, I guess I should say, uh, I've kind of started a, a spinoff thing on swinging through comics, uh, that I'm now officially branding as MJ loves Star Wars, because I do refer to myself as MJ here, and uh, the thing about MJ loves Star Wars is that uh, through through that, I will be doing, like, theory, uh, speculation, um, reviews, and, like, not just reviews, but, like, I'll check out a thing and speculate based on that thing what I think is coming, like, in Project Luminous or what I'm expecting from the authors of Project Luminous, who include Claudia Gray, Daniel Jose Older, uh, Kavan Scott... And I can't remember the other ones, but mostly because the I think there's one other lady and she's doing a book I'm not interested in because it's a, like a children's book. Um, not that that's be below me, but I'm probably just not going to read it. Um, but uh, Charles Soule is writing a novel. He's usually a comics author, uh, but he's going to be writing a novel called, I think, like Light of the Jedi or something like that. And then uh, Claudia Gray, who is one of my favorite new, uh, new canon Star Wars authors, uh, she's going to be writing... Um, like the dark way or some darkness of the Jedi or I don't know, something like that. Um, it's a YA novel. I'm now currently listening to, uh, her YA novel, um, Lo uh, Lost Stars that I refused. No, I didn't refuse to check it out cause I didn't want to. I just wasn't very interested in it, but now I am. Um, so I'm checking that out and I'm only three chapters in. I really like it. I will put a review of that here. Uh, Kavan Scott, uh, I guess he's the architect of Project Luminous or of the whole High Republic thing. Um, he's going to be writing the Marvel Star Wars comic uh, called The High Republic. There's apparently an IDW one also called High Republic Adventures. Uh, but anyway, he'll be writing the Marvel one that's just called High Republic. And he was the writer who did Dooku Jedi Lost, as I mentioned before. And I uh, listened to that, uh, the audio drama of it, and I did a review of that here on this channel. Uh, you should be able to find a link to it here in the end card or whatever. But anyway, I just want to let you know, I'm going to keep on uh, reading uh, Star Wars or Marvel comics uh, and Marvel Star Wars comics. Um, I'm going to keep on reading and reviewing Marvel comics. I'm probably going to finish off the uh, cap, you know, the first 12 issues and then move on to other things uh, moving forward in the timeline. But I'm also going to be doing a lot more Star Wars stuff on this channel because I like Star Wars so darn much. Anyway, uh, thanks for sticking with me. Check out mgmoonews.com for more of my work. I'm an aspiring author who will gladly accept your financial support through coffee or you can buy merch from my Redbubble store. Uh, Swinging Through Comics can be found on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and mjmunoz.com slash STC. Relevant links are in the show notes. Uh, I also have writing that I do that's on mjmunoz.com, so you can find that there. If you had a good time, like and share this. Uh, tell me what you thought about this uh, series if you read it. Um, yeah, tell me what you thought about, the, about it. And if you... Uh, yeah, that, that's the only question. Just what did you think about the comic? Um, and I guess, did you buy... Like, what do you think... Ben's problem is why did he follow the dark side? Is it just that he's an uber contrarian like I've uh, suggested here? Anyway, if you had a good time, like and share this. Subscribe and ring that bell to catch me next time I'm swinging through comics.